All right, the iPhone's been out for a little while now, so I wanted to make a video to share with y'all how to get the best quality video footage out of it, how to kind of use it in your workflow and all that kind of stuff. I've been having a lot of fun using my new phone from everything normal, but in this video, we're gonna be focusing on real estate. So thanks for joining. Now let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound, which is my favorite place and I think the best place to get your soundtracks and your sound effects for your video productions. So first we're gonna go over best camera settings if you're just gonna be using the phone camera app natively. Then we're gonna be going over how to use the new Blackmagic camera app, which is really cool, how you can get all sorts of manual settings and custom settings dialed in to unlock even higher quality footage and a more professional workflow. So first let's talk about setting up the native iPhone camera with settings that are gonna get you the best quality results. So I'm just going into my settings, then camera settings, and we're gonna go down that list. So my standard setting is gonna be 4K 30 frames per second, enhanced stabilization checked on. And for real estate, I like to use HDR because you get a lot more balanced look straight out of camera and it'll show your window views and everything nice and colorful. So basically you're gonna have zero effort in post. Okay, auto frames per second on mine is switched to 30 and 60. And it's probably a good idea to check the lock camera too. Also, depending on what you're filming, clicking the lock white balance button on or off might be beneficial. So if you're doing like transitions from inside to outside or from one room to the next, you're probably not gonna want to leave this checked on. But if you're just doing specific shots in specific rooms, it looks a little bit better if it locks whenever you're recording. So check that on if you want to. And now we're gonna go into the actual camera. So at the top left, I've got my exposure set to negative 0.3. That basically just helps to protect your highlights a little bit. That's it. So negative 0.3, it's gonna still look bright and everything, but it'll help give you a little bit of a safety net. And then in order to change your settings, you can go to the top right corner, change your frame rate if you want to, depending on what you're doing. And ProRes is off because you can't do ProRes internally. And for the most part on the phone, I'm gonna be using the 0.5X lens, maybe the two or the three for some detail shots. That's it. So for real estate videos, you guys know my go-to is 4K 30 frames per second, but I know a lot of you will probably enjoy the footage a lot more if you do 4K 60 frames per second and slow that down to 40% speed playback in your editing because you'll just start out with really, really smooth, really cinematic looking footage, super easy. So this is what it's gonna look like when you're filming with the native app. All you really need to do is click the brightest point to set your exposure and make sure that sky looks really nice and blue. And then you push record, do your camera movement, and you're good to go. And here's how that footage looks without any editing straight out of camera, super easy. So super simple, that's what I do for my like Instagram stories or behind the scenes shots where I'll use my phone. I like to just use the app because that's the main reason and benefit for me that I would use my phone for anything is because it's just so simple and easy. Okay, so if you wanna make it complicated, now we're gonna pull up the Blackmagic app. Not only can you do like manual settings and everything, color temperature, exposure, shutter speed, all that kind of stuff. You can also record internally in the Apple ProRes log, which is a lot more similar looking and a little bit softer and less digital than normal iPhone footage. So it ends up looking a little bit more like a mirrorless camera, which is cool. You can do ProRes on the normal camera app, but you're gonna have to plug in a external recording device like a SSD hard drive. But for real estate stuff using a gimbal, um, I just couldn't really figure out a way to make that work for me, like attaching the SSD to the gimbal somehow. The iPhone gimbal is just so small and there's nowhere to like mount it onto or anything. For me, that just didn't work out. Uh, if you're doing handheld, like normal cinematography kind of stuff, 
and using a cage, you could attach it to your cage with a normal like hard drive mount or something, no problem. But for this kind of stuff where you want it to be really lightweight and simple, this didn't really make sense for me. So now let's talk about the Blackmagic camera app. We'll be going over how to set all your manual settings and how to customize everything to where you'll get the best quality footage from shot to shot when you're shooting real estate. After that, we'll also be going over how to transfer the files to your hard drive to get everything ready to edit. So make sure to stick around till the end. So what you gotta do is download the app and you'll notice it's pretty similar to how Blackmagic cameras are actually set up, which is cool because their user interface and user experience is super great. Uh, super simple, it makes sense, it's very easy to find everything, and this app is just like that. So now we're gonna be in the app. So you wanna make sure your screen is not locked in orientation. Okay, so as you can see on the app, you can control all your stuff manually. So starting in the top left, you've got your lens, you click that, then you can switch from 13 to 24 to 77, or even your front camera, but don't do that because it looks worse. And then next you can change your frames per second. So I got mine set to 30. Cool thing about this is you can do like 48, 50, actual 24 or 25, depending on where you're at in the world. So I leave these settings locked in, 30 frames per second, shutter speed at 1 60th of a second, and Funny thing about the phones is you actually can't change the aperture, which it calls iris. These lenses have a locked aperture apparently. I didn't know that before doing this. And then you can just go in and change your ISO and your white balance, your tint. And you can also lock each setting at the top once you get it dialed in. So that's the really simple stuff. Now let's check this out. So top right. This little square with the dotted square in the middle. I don't know what to call this, but you can turn your zebras on and that's going to show when something's close to overexposed. Then we're going to turn the grid on. So I like to have this one and the little middle dot so it doesn't cover up my composition too much. Depending on what you're filming, you can change your guidelines so it'll tell you where you're safe to film, which is really cool. This other stuff I'm not using except for my LUT. So preview LUT off and on. So if you turn this off, you can see everything in log, which is not very helpful while you're filming. So turning that on allows you to see about what it's going to look like once you're edited. So um, I have a link down below the video with a free LUT that I made to just transform your footage from log to normal Rec. 709 looking footage. So that's what I've got in here. Okay, autofocus, you can set that to auto. Exposure, set that to zero. I've got my stabilization set to standard. You can try out the other ones and see what you think. They kind of enable themselves once you're actually recording, so it doesn't look like it's stabilized until you're actually recording. And then I've noticed there was actually a little bit of a delay with using those, so I didn't really prefer it. So standard was my way to go. And then on the bottom, you can add metadata to your clips if you want to. One thing that's really cool about this is you can actually use this if you're using DaVinci and uh, upload it automatically to a cloud file that if you're working with an editor, they could immediately be getting these in real time and uh, giving you input or comments on your shots and even potentially editing it while you're shooting, which is crazy. Uh, it could speed up your workflow big time. So you would just go in here and select Blackmagic Cloud and log in and make different projects for each thing you're doing. Super, super cool and innovative. So now we're going to the settings option. So here's what I used. Um, I tried the 422 HQ, but it was filling up my phone just way too fast and it was kind of overloading. I'm not sure if it was the footage quality or if it was because I was also doing a screen recording trying to make parts of this video, but um, I ended up switching to this 422 Lite and it worked fine. So that's what I went with. So 422 Lite, 4K, HDR, all this stuff. Camera, enable vertical video, you can lock the orientation if you're going to be filming all in one direction the whole time. 
lens correction, put that on. Helps with vignetting and stuff. Shutter measurement, speed, um, angle's really good, but unless you have variable ND to put on your phone, it's gonna be annoying to use that, just trust me. Um, being able to just change your shutter speed is a lot easier. So, audio, I just went with no audio. I didn't want audio on my footage, so I just turned it off. But if you're filming people and you're doing audio, it's great to be able to record that manually. Monitor settings, here we go. Display histogram, really important. Okay, media, I set it to in-app only. LUTs, display LUT checked on, and that's the LUT that I made. So, Apple log conversion. If you're gonna upload the LUT here, you just go to load LUT. I saved it in a folder, and boom. That's all you do, you just click open. Now it's in, installed. So that's it, that's all the things you need to do to set up your app to be able to film. And since you're obviously interested in leveling up your video production, you're definitely gonna wanna check out today's video sponsor, which is Epidemic Sound. And they have a really special deal going on for you guys right now where you can actually sign up and get two free months to try it out, no risk to you. You can start using their amazing soundtracks and sound design elements in your productions, and it's gonna cover whatever you're doing during that time period. They really have some amazing music for real estate videos, amazing sound design elements to bring your videos to life, make them a lot more cinematic. And to top all that off, the search engine and everything on their site is extremely intuitive and easy to use. You can search by genre, by mood, by instrumental or non-instrumental if you want something with singing and vocals in it, even down to the speed of the song, depending on what type of production you're doing. So it's super easy to find exactly what you want, but if you want to make it even easier, you can even just drag and drop a rough edit of your video project into their music player and it will automatically curate a list of tons of different options that are going to work great with your video. And to top that all off, if you're using Premiere Pro, you can actually do all of this straight in your program with a new plugin. I'll link that down below as well, but that just goes to show that they are always improving stuff and making it better for us, which is great. <laughs> So no pressure, but if you're wanting to make your videos better and you want to do it for free for the next two months, make sure to check out the link down below and take advantage of that limited time offer. So big thanks once again to Epidemic Sound for helping out with this channel and sponsoring this video. Now back to the tutorial. So essentially all that we just did was set this up to where it looks pretty similar and functions pretty similar to how a normal camera would look with like your histogram, the proper settings, the stuff unlocked that you need to unlock, like having your zebras to help with your exposure guide, your footage quality, having that LUT installed, all that kind of stuff. So now it's gonna look similar to how it would look if you're using a normal camera to film. All right, so the next thing you gotta set up is your gimbal if you're new to this. So I'll link a video up here on how I set up my gimbal. It's the exact same as how I do it still. Basically everything is just on slow settings and I use the pan follow function pretty much exclusively for real estate stuff. That's the simple version, but check out that video up here if you wanna see more in depth or need that help. Now let's talk a little bit about actually filming and changing your settings while you're filming. So essentially, with the Blackmagic camera app, every single thing is gonna function the same way a normal camera would do, but maybe a little bit more simple. So all we're gonna do from shot to shot to change our settings is adjust our exposure, adjust our white balance, and if we're gonna do a different type of shot, we're gonna change lenses, which on the iPhone is super easy because you don't actually have to change anything, you just push a button. So if you're new to this, using your histogram is gonna be completely essential to getting good footage. So you're gonna look at the histogram for every single shot and what we wanna do is make sure it's not too far to the left, which is completely black, completely underexposed, or too far to the right, which is completely white, completely overexposed. You want there to be kind of an arc somewhere towards the middle, maybe a little bit to the right of the middle, and that's usually gonna come out looking the best. 
And to get our exposure set and the histogram looking like that, we're just going to be adjusting a few settings per shot. But first let's talk about shutter speed, which is important for lots of reasons. But for this video, we're just going to be getting into how it affects our exposure. So you want to keep your shutter speed at double your frame rate as much as possible. So for 30, I'm going to stick with 1 60th of a second as much as possible because that's going to look the most natural and smooth with motion blur and all that kind of stuff. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it too much right now. So since I'm trying to leave the shutter speed at 1 60th of a second as much as possible, the first thing I'm going to be adjusting to change the exposure is my ISO which is going to darken or brighten the exposure. For the iPhone, the footage is probably going to come out the cleanest if we leave the ISO as low as possible. Be careful not to go too high or your image is going to come out really noisy and potentially unusable. So after changing the ISO, if the histogram is not where you want it to be, that's when we'll also need to change the shutter speed, which is another setting that can control how bright or dark the image is. So the faster the shutter speed, the darker the image. If you're able to get this on a multiple of your frame rate, that's gonna look a little bit better. But if you're not, it's probably gonna be fine. It's still iPhone footage, so it's probably gonna not be noticeable. So you're gonna do that and then also change your white balance and tint potentially for every shot. So as far as white balance goes, my go-to's are 5600 Kelvin for exteriors. If it's sunset, I like to do 6000. If it's even later sunset, I like to do a little bit warmer, so like 7,000. And for interiors, if it's mixed lighting, I like to stick to 4,800 Kelvin. And if it is just only tungsten lighting, or if I'm shooting at night, I like to go closer to like 3,200 Kelvin or maybe 3,600 Kelvin, depending on what looks better on the preview. And if you're totally new to tint, all it does is kind of corrects if there's a little bit of a green tint or if there's a little bit of a magenta tint you can go one way or another until it looks natural to you and stick with that. So I don't suggest using this one too much because probably the standard colors are gonna look pretty good, but if it's a super noticeable green tint or a super noticeable magenta tint, it will help to fix this a little bit in camera instead of having to deal with it in the edit. So we're just gonna do that for every single shot and continue with everything else just like normal. If you want to get really into it, you can get an adapter and use a variable ND filter, which will go right here over your lenses. You can twist it a little bit and that will pretty much adjust your exposure for exteriors. Instead of having to change all the shutter speed and shutter angle and all that kind of stuff, uh, you'll be able to get a little bit more cinematic looking footage. But at the end of the day, it's still iPhone footage, so I don't know how noticeable it'll be. I've never used an ND for my phone, but maybe I'll have to try that and show you guys the difference. So that's it for setting up the app, getting all the camera settings, um, getting the actual recording process set up and knowing what to do for each shot. Settings wise, obviously, actually getting the shots and everything is a totally different skill and if you're interested in learning all that stuff look at some of my other videos up here on my real estate video playlist i have a lot of mobile videos but also all the normal camera videos will teach you like camera movements and maybe give you some inspiration ideas as well so once you actually shoot this stuff in the app you're gonna want to transfer it onto your computer to edit it. And a cool thing about the new phone with the USB-C, um, I guess you could probably do this with an old phone just having the right cable, but you can plug the USB-C in, plug your hard drive in, and transfer all of that footage directly onto your hard drive into a folder straight from your phone. Super, super fast. Then plug that straight into your computer, import that right into your editing program, and edit just like normal. So here's how to do that. <laughs> So you're just gonna plug that in, go into your camera app, click media, click this little button up here that'll let you select a bunch of clips. I'll just click a few. And now we're gonna click this little send button where you're gonna click save to files. And in here, click browse and that's where your hard drive's gonna come up. So you just click your hard drive then click this little button that has three dots, click new folder, 
make a little project folder and then click save up on the right and then it's going to automatically transfer all your files over and you can just watch the little light that normally blinks on your hard drive and wait until that's done and then you're able to just plug it into your computer and get into editing right away so anyways that's the whole workflow of file management basically and setting up your new phone for getting the best footage possible so this could work for any industry not just real estate obviously but um you guys use phones a lot, so I wanted to help you out. Thanks once again to today's video sponsor, which is Epidemic Sound. Make sure to use that link down below for the free 30-day trial. And if you're watching this during the Cyber Week promotion, make sure to sign up ASAP and take advantage of those two free months, which is even better than normal. So leave a comment if you got any questions, leave a comment if you have anything to contribute, and as always, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Peace.